I think it's the only way. I think <laughs> storytelling is the human language. Mm -hmm. And I think as we go forward, people will start to understand that more and more. There's a reason why a movie can work in the United States and then overseas in different countries. And even in some countries that don't even speak uh, English, they can still enjoy that movie or they can still enjoy uh, a stand up special. Right. When you see Kevin Hart or Chris Rock go over there, they're not speaking different languages, but they're doing sets in front of crowds that aren't even 100% English speaking crowds, but they still get it. And that's because we're connected through stories. You know, every story, you know, has the same structure. The stories have the same uh, action points and inflection points that make a great story, a great story. And, you know, there's really only a couple of different types of stories that you can tell, but like that connects everyone. And it's the best teaching tool. If you look at all of our ancient books, they're written in story format because it's the communication of the people. It's the way we learn. Welcome to another episode of the Brothers Who Talk with Terry and AD. This podcast is about men talking about everyday shenanigans, the stuff that makes us mad, to the topics that concern why in the world do these guys have a podcast. Let's get to it. Well, good morning. How are you? Happy Thursday. While you while you are coming in, make sure that you say hey. Make sure you share the broadcast out. If you are watching this on any platform, make sure you do your comments so we can see it. Throw the emojis up. All yes. of that good stuff. So we're glad you're here. What's yes. going on? AD. Going on? Yes, sir. Like we do every week, man. Don't don't ask me. Don't don't even ask. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not gonna not ask you because I always ask you every Thursday. So oh, man. how was your week, brother? <sighs> it's 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 a, an internal challenge um you know as you strive to be better um you're still gonna get some stuff wrong hmm. and then sometimes you go down the wrong the, the road of wrongness and you you like oh man how did i come down this road again right. how did right. i find myself in this spot again so it's trying to correct what's wrong you know and it's <laughs> Did you say down the road of wrongness? On the road of wrongness. Okay, that, that's about the best way to put it. Just oh, <laughs> and you're just like, man, you know, it's <laughs> it's just like, how did I get down this road again? So um, it's changing, changing habits, and and not doing the things you've done before. But other than that, I'm I'm healthy. My family's healthy. All is well. Um, you know, I always like to say they're first world problems that I'm having. So praise God for that. Mm. Um, it could be a lot worse. Uh, so I'm I'm thankful <laughs> for yeah. the level the level of problems I have. Oh, um, right. so it's it's just you know trying to correct the wrongness in your life. Um, other than that, all is well. Uh, my my son, I, who I who I love and adore. You know, that's when you know <laughs> when you, you got to look on things. Part of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love love and adore him. He's just he's just you know he's and growing. We just he's, him a little while ago, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's yeah. reaching teenager Ooh. level, teenager status. So I see the teenager creeping in there. Mm -hmm. Uh the, I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. Don't say another word to me. Yeah. And I'm thinking I'm gonna have to snatch your face off. That's yeah. That's what's gonna happen. I'll, I'll give it back around 21. Yeah. But I'm gonna have to snatch your face off. Um. But he's in, he's in that place where you start dispelling yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell him uh, he so. have, tell him he have to he'll have to watch his crotch a little harder nowadays <laughs> to keep right. that stink off of him. You know what right. I'm saying? But I but yeah. I love him. I mean he's 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 still pretty good. He's yeah. still good. And I'm 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 praying that he stays. You know stays good you know I, I, and and even if i get back what i threw out you know it's not horrible because i wasn't a bad child you know yeah. i know i i've i've you know you get attitude you have stuff but i still was good in the house at right. moments but i was still good you know you made up for it. I feel right right <laughs> right so you know even even sam she wasn't a bad child disrespectful to a family you know so i'm not worried about that so much i just want him to think and make good decisions and he will good decisions you know, and, and he will what do you what, isn't that what you tell your kids I, every time terry just lets his kids off the go and go into the school you always say good yes. decisions make always, good decisions make today. good choices i always say good that choices. Yeah. Good choices. There you go. 
<laughs> just make good choices. Like, you know, the only thing you can do is you can lead a horse. You know, my kids, I love them, right? It's just right. like, I, I do my kids like Morpheus did Neo in The Matrix. You know, when it comes to a choice, I, I'll say, hey, you know, this is the door. I, I, I told you, I'll lead to the door. It's up to you to walk through it. That, that is what I tell my kids. I mean, so, you know, as parents, we always try to do what's best for them and make, hopefully they make the best choices. Yes. Um, but in my upbringing, it was the same way. I, I was wanting to, you know, uh, I, I didn't think about none of the stuff my mom and daddy said until I was grown. Oh, yeah. So it, it'll, it'll, oh, yeah. it'll be like that. It'll be like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, my week was pretty good. I didn't have any incidents. Um, nothing other than these two boys had to jump on, you know, uh, Zariah. All right. Who these little, these little boys? They play together all the time, right. so I can understand what their problem was. But uh, they're they're they are a product of their environment, right. so I wasn't too upset, I guess. Um, but I don't like my I don't like nobody no kid hitting my hitting my kid, of course. male or female. Because normally if I if I was home, right. it'll be it'll been Chin Check City, you know what I'm saying? But I was at home, I was at work, so I didn't I didn't really mess with it. Right. All right. So listen, you guys. What we did, uh, we brought up a new, a new a segment of the show. I know we, we used to do. If you guys have been following us for a while, before we got on Charm City, we were doing it on our own. Uh, we would uh, do a section called Word of the Day or Tell Them Why You're Mad and things of that nature. And we still do Tell Them Why You're Mad because it's still it's still an awesome segment. But what I decided to do this week, uh, and we're going to change up just a little bit. If I can take this down, yes. I am going to incorporate a new section called Top Five. All right. So we'll go through the top five. Oh. Uh, we'll go through the top five right, news. The before we buy that. Top five. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and this is before we bring our guest on uh, the, the man of the half hour. Actually, he is already here. I don't know if he can hear me. Oh, but, yeah. And so, yeah, we'll go through the top five real quick. Okay. Some of the some of the news stories. We'll start with number one. Number one is if you guys are in Wisconsin, if you guys are in Wisconsin, the Supreme Court there in Wisconsin said, "Forget your judgment. We're gonna lift this uh, stay at home order, and y'all go y'all go back to work. Do what you want to do. Nice. Do what you want to do. Nice. So if you are and and the reason why they overturned it was because the Wisconsin government extended it without going to the legislature." Uh-huh. So the Supreme Court said, "No, no, no." The, high, the highest court in the land said, "You can't do that." Yeah, y'all Not like that. going back to work, right? Y'all going back to work, man. It's you know, they playing games with y'all. I, I think Wisconsin is one of those states that, that has very few cases or uh, trending downward as far as their cases are concerned. All right, and number two, the second thing on the top five this week is standoff at the McMichael home in Georgia. If you guys are in Georgia, which AD is, if you haven't heard about it yet. <laughs> Uh, those folks, they went to his house. Mm-hmm. A little, a little, a little, mil, a little militant outfit went down to his house, fit, posted up at his crib, AK 47s, the whole nine right. yard. Right. And don't you know the, uh, of course, the neighbors called the police, but there's black men running around AK 47s. You know, that ain't gonna fly. They got Susan out there going, yeah, 911. Yeah, they got black people <laughs> out here with AK 47s. <laughs> but the cops wouldn't touch it. Why? The cops wouldn't come through. Right. They ain't going down there. They ain't crazy. Right. They like what? <laughs> yeah. No, we're not gonna do anything with that. Right. That the folks live their life, live their best life down there in front of. I mean, so the, the caption of the video that I saw though, it was like, "Say time is over." I think people are really starting to get upset. Right. Right. And exerting, um, exerting our legal rights. And legal if rights. The, if if we're on. If yes. some white folks can do it and walk around with AK right. boys on the courthouse steps, we can do it too. Right. Um, and so they're really starting to. Right. I'm with them. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. What do you think about that one? It's just, oh, you're, you're, I, you're down in Georgia with it, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's 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 some areas got a little more tension than others. Mm. Um, so I, I would say I'm in a kind of mixed area, middle class ish, class ish. Ish. Yeah. Um, ish. Oh, yeah, get that so. ish out there. <laughs> yeah. But um, just, don't, just don't cuss though. Just don't right. cuss. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's 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 a different environment, and some areas are even a little more tense than others. Um, Brunswick hasn't been known for that that I know of. Mm. Um, so this situation is kind of is different. Um, mm. But yeah, pe- you know. 
it's you have a right to bear arms you know so you know protesting it's it's kind of like some folks just need to know that we're just not going to just take it anymore you know like it's it's not just gonna go down like that you know we are here um you know no one wants civil unrest you yeah. know i, I right. don't want to yeah but we just have to show that we are we are standing and we're vigilant you we're know tired of it yeah, yeah. We're tired of it. we we've marched before because you know in in one sense we were kind of outgunned yeah. you know like we couldn't we couldn't pull it together you know and anything we started we had to fight against the government but yeah. you you private citizens <laughs> we're yeah. not we're we, not just yeah. stand for it you know not so. doing it with you not doing it with you but i, I mean think, yeah. what's the name of that song who what's the name of that group that song that song uh we're not gonna oh, take man. it. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, yeah. That's kind of where we are. No, we ain't gonna take it. On that other song, we're we didn't we didn't start it. the fire. We didn't start the fire. Yeah, I, I don't know. So if anybody knows who that is, I think, that I think we didn't start the fire was Billy Joel. Billy Joel. We didn't start the fire. It was always here it's since the cool. world was turning. Yeah. We didn't start the fire. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Number three on the top five. The family of the ENT that was su is suing for wrongful death. I was telling you guys on the Brothers of Legacy, we were talking about it. Uh, young lady in Louisville, Kentucky, they served a search warrant on her home, a raid on her home. Uh, couldn't find out that the person they were looking for was on the other side of town also he was already in custody they busted up in her home started shooting blindly into the home and killed her in her in her bed as she slept uh so the family of that emt she's an emt uh is suing for wrongful death over in, in louisville kentucky uh, which doesn't really surprise me because that's where mitch mcconnell comes from that's his state you know and uh we already know how mitch feels about president obama but we're not going to go there, but you know, Louisville, Kentucky is just one of those states, man. You know, and so wrong for death. You think that's uh, a good spot? I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> number four on the, the number four on the top five. Unemployment benefits have risen between May third and May ninth. Over two point nine million claims have been formed. Are being uh, claimed on within that that time frame. Not surprising. It was thirty five. It was thirty six point five million claims since coronavirus struck. Right. But two point nine million claims between May third and May 9th. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of, of businesses shut down. So yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not surprising. Or and then and then you know some businesses probably gave employees a choice. You yeah. Know, um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so I don't think I don't think they got much of a choice. I don't really believe they got much of a choice, but <laughs> yeah. but I think a lot 2. of point nine. Yeah, that, that's not surprising at all because it you know like it had to you know there's there's the firing and then I got to make my claim and then it's when the claims go through. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's not surprising. Not surprising uh, at all. It's almost sickening. Two point so nine. Yeah, I mean, money. in. I, you know, I, you know, E Digger. I'm, I'm sure he's in here. There he is, and, and is a mess. People getting their money, and so if you guys uh, follow Ernest, you know his 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 unemployment uh, should be a whole should be a whole drama series. I tell you, because oh, wow. when he's when he's and when he vents, he vents, right? And he means it when he vents, and so he's very <laughs> upset with the the system and how they're doing, how they they're getting paid or not getting paid and trying to get through and it's hard to get through so i think the, this thing is a disaster right as a, as a complete and utter disaster it's absolutely crazy. At, least, at least for some at least some states because unfortunately the government for whatever reason why yeah. i still don't understand have not updated their systems so i don't understand it yeah i don't i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get, get it, it. I don't, I, don't get get it. It. I, don't, I don't get it either like i don't yeah why they haven't revamped and taken some of the billions that they spent everywhere else and not gave it to hey here google can you fix this for me yeah. here here microsoft can you do something about that you know and I, I i don't yeah i really don't i don't get it so georgia's i don't know i don't think is struggling as bad but i know some of the other states are i know new york probably is because they're I know, old i know be more struggling outdated cities and yeah. and, and states Crazy. for whatever reason but yeah, yeah. Tell me. last <laughs> or your last or your top five is the helicopter company that oh, kobe had his plane his, uh, hel uh, his helicopter with are blaming the victims mm, break that down brother. okay so you're telling me 
so the company, according to documents they gave to the to the courts, that they the the, the victims were negligent and flying on that day. So that's their counteraction to the, to the lawsuit that uh, that Vanessa put up. Or oh, they were negligent. You know, listen to me. I, I don't know. I know we run a little, a little bit over time here, but you're telling me that a baby. Right. Gianna Bryant was negligent in getting on the helicopter with her father. Right. Uh, right. Come on. I mean, I get it. Lawyers are involved now. Money's going to be right. shelled out. This company probably will go bankrupt before this thing is over. Right. And so, it, it, come on. Right. C- come with a better defense. <laughs> come right. with a better defense than that. I, I right. don't understand that. And how are you going to blame the victims? They're not here anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they, they, they can't defend themselves. Right. But you're doing that just to um, not come on. I, I just yeah. Right, 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 right. But that's your top five. <laughs> Roll it over. Go, <laughs> you, you guys go. It's your top five. And <laughs> I like that section too. Top five. All right. So we're gonna take a break right now. When we come back, we're gonna bring on the man of the half hour, Tony R. Sanders, who is chomping at the bit down in the box. I can see him. He's up and down. He's up and I know he's in the, on the bit. So give me 30 seconds. We'll be right back. All right. So if you are not familiar, if you have not yet, go ahead and join or subscribe to Charm City Direct TV. We've got a yeah. whole list of things or shows on the network. Um, so E Dig is a pretty cool CEO. He don't chop, he don't he don't chew us out too bad. So y'all make sure. <laughs> so y'all come on through and join up. Oh. All right. So the man of the half hour. Yes. Really needs no introduction. <laughs> But maybe it does, depending on what circle you run in. Okay, <laughs> but our guest of today, Tony R. Sanders, yes. owner and the founder of Gallo Media. Okay. Uh, when he put me in this group, I was like, what in the world is a Gallo? But I, I didn't ask him. Because, you know, he's going to explain that here on the, in the interview here in a little bit. But Gallo offers digital media services, including content marketing and social media management. Tony also, he also hosts a couple of great shows. Uh, in my words, this is podcast. Uh, the stories we tell ourselves, another story that uh, another show that he does, and six second stories that he does. Uh, the dude is a he's a hoot and a hilarious. He's hilarious. If you've never seen a, if you don't follow him, you haven't seen um, a couple of his stand up sets that he's done. <laughs> you know what? Let me bring Tony on here. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Yo. my good sir. What's going on, brother man? What's up? Oh man, look, AD. I think I should go on behalf of AD. We are ecstatic about having you here for a number of reasons. Uh, for those of you guys that follow the Brothers of Legacy, uh, we do a Monday through Friday a Good Morning God Bless roundtable. We used to do past the cast, but now it's roundtable because we got tired of the past cast. <laughs> when nobody coming, numbers were low. So we said, well, you know, just put everybody on it. So, but those of you that you don't know, Tony R. Sanders is the originator of Good Morning, God Bless. Started back up in what, 15, Tony? Yeah, 2015. Yeah, and he would come on, fa- on Periscope. Periscope. Mm-hmm. Every morning and he would give an encouraging word. He, it wouldn't be long. It would, it would be on I mean, but he had people that were just waiting for him to do Good Morning, God Bless. And everybody that would come into the live, he would say, Good morning, God bless. Good morning, God bless you. Good morning, God bless you. And then every person that came in, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And so that's how I met Tony R. Sanders through Periscope, because they, when I was going through that dark period of my life, I would uh, go on Periscope 6.30 every single morning. I know who I'm going to see on Periscope. You know, well, 6.30. It was eight thirty, right? Somewhere in there. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> well, so we're glad you're here, man. We're, we're glad, so to glad to be here, man. Oh, man. Glad to be here. Thank you guys for uh, allowing me to come on your show. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So I just, I just want to say, I just 
kind of got introduced to you um i've been following a little bit and but before this interview i was like let me dig into what he got going on if you've not seen the second 60 second stories I'm telling you they are it's, they're, they're really good i mean like for real they're really good you know people like yeah they're great man. i've not seen one <laughs> but no i'm actually i've been watching them i was like Yo, i gotta check these out and the funny thing he does is and and i'm gonna totally steal this he says, "Okay, we'll get get ready right to the sixty seconds." And he's like, "Alexa, set the time." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, Alexa is my my virtual assistant. Right. The funny ones is when Alexa's like, "I don't, I didn't catch that. Can you tell me again?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like a real employee, man. Right. Sometimes they don't get it the first time. You got to repeat it. Oh, right now. <laughs> is that Michelle saying it? Hey, Michelle. I told you his wife almost yep. something. All right. My wife's in here, yo. Oh, Shout hey, out to Michelle. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it does. Good morning, God bless lives on. I remember when I was getting ready to do, um, I was doing it on my own before AD and I got together with Brothers of Legacy. I called Tony up, or I inboxed Tony. I was like, Tony, um, would it, it would it be okay if we use like if I use Good Morning God Bless? And he was like, Yeah, you know, what I'm saying let it live on. Because the reason why I asked you that was because I know you had trademark or anything. I didn't want to step on nobody's toes. You know, I'm always I'm very careful. <laughs> I'm very careful, but. In this interview style uh, setting, AD has some questions for you, and Perfect. we're gonna get it going. Yeah, I'm gonna call you out. You know. <laughs> Let's do it. Always. Let's do so it. So hold on, and also, and I'm gonna put it. Actually, I'm gonna put it up. Anyone that's watching this on YouTube is gonna get an opportunity to see it. If you have not seen his mother's tribute, oh, um, his mother, man, it's 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 uh, awesome. Kind of like a comparison of of comedic so skills, and you can see where he got it from. So it's back. Uh, it's back. I like to do. Yeah, uh, my mom's great. She did. Yeah, the first time I ever seen her. Is that cool? Yeah. Is that cool? These are words that you won't find in a dictionary, but you'll find in every black household. You ready? The first word is Samachu. You heard that? You heard that before? Samachu. The boy, what's the matter with you? My mom's jokes in real life. Here's another one. M1. Everybody say M1. M1. Yeah, I'm kicking one of them and humming over here too. Another word that she would use. So here's the word that we hear often and you won't probably won't recognize it until you hear it in a sentence. And this word is for Everybody say for Give me some money before I can go to the store. God is everything and without him I would not be here. So if you don't know him, you should get some money. The first thing I want to ask you, uh, so what is your what is your inspiration for the shows that you do? That's good. That's a good question. Most of my uh, inspiration comes from helping other people. So I really get a kick out of helping other people. It goes back to my sales training days when I would coach someone to get a sale and it worked for them. The joy and excitement that they received or that they would express was like everything to me. And so normally when I stand up a show, I'm doing it for the sake of helping other people so that I can kind of see that expression and that joy that other people get when they receive uh, something of value or something that they can then go and utilize throughout their lives. And so any show that you see me do, uh, that's normally at the heart of it. The other thing I think it's super important to acknowledge is uh, I also want to put my uh, skills, gifts, and abilities on display for the purposes of uh, commerce, right? Like, so I'm in I'm in the business of building businesses through storytelling, and so I need to be the first example of that. One of our core values at Gallo Media is, you know, you have to swallow your own medicine. That means before we prescribe anything to anyone. We've already tried it, so we know what that experience is like. And so a lot of times I'm setting up shows to do it, to taste it, to see how it feels, to experience it. And then I can take that learning and then leverage it to one of our clients in the future. And so those are two of the main reasons why, you know, I do the shows that I do. And the reason I do them the way that I do them is for those two reasons. Mm. Do you find that um, storytelling is the most effective way to get your message across? I think it's the only way. I think <laughs> storytelling is the human language. Mm -hmm. And I think as we go forward, people will start to understand that more and more. There's a reason why 
a movie can work in the United States and then overseas in different countries and even in some countries that don't even speak uh, English. They can still enjoy that movie or they can still enjoy uh, a stand up special. Right. When you see Kevin Hart or Chris Rock go over there, they're not speaking different languages, but they're doing sets in front of crowds that aren't even 100 percent English speaking crowds. But they still get it. And that's because we're connected through stories. You know, every story, you know, has the same structure. The stories have the same uh, action points and inflection points that make a great story a great story. And, you know, there's really only a couple of different types of stories that you can tell. But like that connects everyone. It's the best teaching tool. If you look at all of our ancient books, they're written in story format because it's the communication of the people. It's the way we learn. Right. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, just parable driven. You know, Jesus told pretty much everything through a parable first. And then he was like, OK, do you all understand what I'm saying? You know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. So how long you've been how long have you been doing stand up? I started doing stand up about three years ago. So in 2017, um, I try to do something every year for my birthday that scares me a little bit. And, you know, continues to push me outside of my comfort zone. Like and I had always had a love for comedy and for stand up, but I didn't know if I could do it. It's one of those things like, man, I, I, under, I think I understand how this works. Right. I think I understand why people are laughing when they're laughing. <laughs> but let me see if I can go up there and, you know, put into work what I think I've learned over the years of just consuming content uh, from a stand up perspective right. and so uh i knew that if i went up there i could at least capture people's attention long enough for them to not boo me off stage right if you give me five minutes i could at least capture your attention to yeah. you could say like okay he's interesting he I'm ain't funny <laughs> <laughs> he ain't funny but he's interesting at least like i didn't i didn't mind listening to him right and so i signed up to do stand up for my birthday at a local comedy club wow. and uh, signed a form online and they're saying hey if it's your first time you're going to get three minutes and so I thought about things to say for three minutes uh, right. at that point didn't even think to write anything down I thought of like you know I could talk for this long for three minutes right. and then when I got there I learned two things number one I learned that uh, I wasn't going to get three minutes I was actually going to get five minutes which doesn't sound like a big difference, but now where you're the only one on stage with a microphone and you're talking and people are expecting for you to make them laugh, that's a long time to fill. So then I'm thinking like, okay, what can I say with these other two minutes? And I also learned that I was being entered into a contest that they were running at the time called the Indiana Mic Off. Wow. And so they had a format where all the comedians who perform and then they would bring you back on stage and do like Showtime at the Apollo style where they hold their hand over your head and get crowd response. Right. And whoever got the loudest response won that night. Uh, so I'm like, OK, great. If this goes wrong, like really, <laughs> really wrong, I got to stand in front of these people two times now and hear them not laugh the first time and then not yeah. laugh or clap the second time. This is going to be horrible. Yeah. Right. But I did it anyway. And uh, to make a long story less long, I actually won the contest that night wow. and ended up going on to the next round. And, you know, that kind of jump started my uh, my love for performing comedy. I've always loved comedy, but performing comedy, that kind of wow. sparked that new love. That's wow. dope. And now, if, if, I'm going to throw a question here real quick. Now, those of you that uh, follow Tony. Or if you don't follow Tony, which you should, if you don't, you live up under a rock. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Follow Tony. What you will find out about Tony is that he is a collector of coffee mugs. Yep. And he has all kinds from Star Wars to, you know, Dilbert, I'm sure. But <laughs> uh, when did you start that? And when did you know you had a love for uh, coffee mugs? Uh, that's an interesting question. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know. It just kind of happened over time. I've always enjoyed uh, drinking coffee since I was able to. I, a funny story, my uh, my grandparents had someone that lived in with them, and that's where we would spend most of our days in the summer, especially before we went to school. And I just remember, like, my mom and uh, her, who was, you know, kind of like my, my great aunt and my grandmother, all sitting at the table, 
Uh, my grandfather would come down, they would drink coffee, and they would have these amazing conversations. And I always wanted to be at that table having some of those conversations. And so when I got old enough to drink coffee, actually before I got old enough, she, my great aunt would kind of give me some coffee on the side. I don't think my parents or my grandparents knew that. <laughs> she would slip me a little bit of her coffee. But yeah. when I got old enough, you know, I started to do those same things. And so for me, coffee represents great conversations. Wow. And so um, over time, you know, I just kind of want to interject my personality into anything that I do. And so I saw an interesting coffee mug and I bought it. And then we would go travel somewhere and I would go to the gas station to use the restroom and I would see a coffee mug and then I bought it. And then the next thing you know, my wife's like, OK, we got to do something about these coffee mugs because it's taking up all of my cabinet space. We, right. we literally have a two door cabinet in the kitchen that is dedicated to coffee mugs. And I had to get rid of like 40 of them uh, last year. And I have a rack of coffee mugs. So it's crazy. It's a problem. I wouldn't recommend it, but <laughs> I, I love it, man. It, every coffee mug means something different. I can point back to a story wow. or a time of, you know, when I received it, why I received it, where I was at, you know, if I bought it or if someone gave Except, it to me. All the yeah, all the cabin space. Yeah, that's cabin real. <laughs> so, yeah. We don't so need I, plates. We don't yeah. need plates. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's I can't, e but I can't even, you know, I can't even tell you when. And then, you know, doing good morning and God bless. People started to send me yeah, coffee mugs. I like I had yeah. a PO box set up, and people would send me coffee mugs. So I have a I coffee mug, and someone sent me that's like literally this big. Like you, you could never, you know, I don't even know how you would use it. But <laughs> someone sent me that one. Someone went to Columbia and found something on vacation and sent me that mug. And someone lived in Florida. Someone sent me a mug to commemorate the show. Uh, GMGB our 100th episode they sent me a mug to do so yeah. you know people started sending it and but I, I can't even tell you when it started <laughs> oh man I tell you what so listen we're going to have more with Tony in a little bit we're going to take a commercial break real quick so be right back hang tight for me Welcome back. So, real quick, just a reset of what's going on. We are here with the brothers who talk with Terry and AD, our special guest host, and the man of the half hour is Tony R. Sanders down there. So, if you know Tony, and if you want to say hey to Tony, <laughs> put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> we're gonna we, we're gonna do. I'm gonna set up a call in show or something. So when we have guests, they can call in on us. That'll be dope. Uh, that will be dope. Uh, I know we do it. We do it on brunch, and Lisa has a Lisa has a. Oh, I'm calling, calling yeah, nice. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I look, so, forward, to, I look forward to the trolls. <laughs> oh, they come in <laughs> oh, yeah, off the wall comments. Like, are you guys voting for Trump 2020? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then, I and get then, those on my show sometimes. <laughs> like, crazy talk, crazy, crazy. Um, so Tony, when you did when you started out with Good Morning Got Best on Periscope, did you know, mm -hmm. did you know that it would, did you have an idea that it would get as big as it did? absolutely not yeah. <laughs> I didn't know at all I had just finished reading this book called Platform by Michael Hyatt and uh, he started to talk about how he used the blog to propel his business and at the time I was working for a company and I wanted to try to get ahead in that company and so I started a blog uh, called Coffee and Commission to show people that not only could I sell, but I could also train other people how to sell because th those are my aspirations at the time. I wanted to be a sales trainer. And so I started this blog that I did three times a week. And, uh, you know, the long story short, I got the promotion, became a trainer, became the manager of training, ran the training department, all that. At, and it was propelled by this blog. And so with that ideology that I learned from Michael Hyatt, I started to look for other platforms that I could utilize to tell my skills, like show my skills and to figure out like how I could utilize those things to, you know, kind of propel myself into, you know, opportunities. And so I found Periscope and I downloaded it and I was watching people. And from watching people, 
I said, man, I need to just start doing live streams. I had never done a live stream before any other place, never been live. But I was like, I need to do something just to kind of get the wheels turning and get going. Right. And then maybe once I figure out how it works, I can get on there and start doing my sales training because that's really what I wanted to try to capitalize on. That was my heart. You know, I felt like I was really good at that. And so one day I was getting an oil change at Jiffy Lube and across the street was a Starbucks. And I'm watching a Periscope like an idiot walking across the street like this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I get to the Starbucks, I get my coffee. And on the way back, it hit me like, why don't I just, you know, it's Saturday morning. It's like 9 a.m. Why don't I just go live to see what it looks like on the other side? And if anybody, you know, walks in or comes into the live or whatever, I'll just say good morning and God bless. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And like three people showed up. I don't know who these three people were. <laughs> you know, I don't know why they follow me, but one lady, her name was her name was Gwen, wow. and we're still connected to this day. And wow. she just, I said good morning and God bless, and she said it back, and I was like, well, that was cool. And I was like, well, let me just introduce myself. And then I liked it; it was fun. It was only three people there. And then Sunday morning, I was like, I should do that again because that was kind of fun. Wow. And then Monday, I was like, I should do that again. And then on Tuesday. <laughs> I was kind of like, man, what if I gave them like uh, some information to go with good morning and God bless. So like, I'll right. say that to whoever comes in and but at the same time, maybe give them uh, motivation. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. And then people started inviting their followers to get their daily Dope, good morning yeah. and God bless. Wow. And then, you know, it just kind of took off from there. So I, I had no idea. That wasn't even what I was on there for. I was on there to do sales advice, but that is what took off. And so, right. yeah. Right. It's, it's amazing how, <laughs> how when you jump in and you find your space, you know, like, you had, it's like you just, hey, I'm just going to share this. And then you find yourself sharing other stuff. And, and, and the amazing part about Periscope, just people start coming in. You're like, I don't, I don't even know these folks. Like, yeah. I got more supporters that I don't know than people that actually know me. Like, they just right. come in, you know. And, yeah. and so that's I think that's the amazing power of Periscope that I always Yeah, always That was the cool thing about it. I didn't know any of those people. The people right. that I actually knew only heard about the show because other people started to do it and mentioning my name and my mm -hmm. my aunt hit me up one time and was like what is this gmgb thing i keep hearing people say that and tony r sanders that's you right like what is what's going on here and then so like that's what you know started to to work for me uh what's up Ernest harris i see you saying hello Here's the interesting thing about social media, though. All these platforms go through these phases where it's so easy to grow organically, where you can go on there, literally start with zero followers, start putting out content, and then amass a following over time with doing the right things and being consistent right. that it's just a special time and space. Like Periscope's not at that space today. You can yeah. still do it, but it's so much diff much it's more hard, you know, difficult. TikTok yeah. is in that space today. Uh, LinkedIn is actually still in that space today where you can go on and start with zero and use hashtags and get in front of people that you wouldn't normally get in front of. We have a client that we're doing work for them and they literally started from zero. And then the first week they get 25 followers and they're like, whoa, what just happened? And I'm like, yeah. we're just getting started. Like, we only put out three pieces of content that week. Once we really start to put out content, it's going to go crazy. And so Periscope was in that time and it was just a, it was just a special moment. I mean, it can't be duplicated. People try to duplicate it now, but it can't be duplicated. It can't, it can't be done. It was a different time. AD? Um, I wanted to kind of discuss. Um, so what do you have going on now? I know you got your media company. Um, you got your 60 second stories you're still doing. Which, I, which, which I, is great. Those yeah, are great. I need you not to stop that. So just in your head. <laughs> which, you know, and all of us in the live stream, sometimes in your head, you're like, do people really watch? Do people really care? Yes, we care. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I have no intentions on stopping. It's funny, I started it and I was just going to do it for a couple of weeks while we were in quarantine uh, just to help. I saw an opportunity to help people. I'm like, man, if people knew how much telling their story online could provide opportunities for them, especially while we're sheltered in place, mm -hmm. everyone's home. People are starting to realize that they are uh, underemployed. People get the realization that they're about to become unemployed. Right. And there's a lot of hurt that comes with that, but there's also a grand opportunity to say, wow, I could start to rewrite my story and make it to be whatever 
I want it to be. And so what I do now is kind of twofold. We have our, our Gallo Media, which uh, we help build businesses through storytelling online, uh, essentially content marketing. But for the majority of the people who watch my content, they don't fall into a client category that I could work with them on because there's a, you know, we have a minimum fee. There's a minimum uh, engagement rate that I don't think most individuals would be able to take a part of. So we have our B2B clients where we do full service media agency for them. So we'll we'll create the show. We'll produce the show. We'll come up with the strategy on how to uh, deliver the content, the right platforms to put it on. All of those things will come out and, uh, you know, do all of them for. So all they have to do is show up and be on camera talent, do their thing. We'll coach them through camera presence and all of that stuff. And then, you know, put the content out for them. Uh, the other side of what I do is I have coaching clients that I work with normally on a 90 day engagement. And with a 90 day engagement, I take them through our eight step process of how to take an idea to execution and then over to monetization, which a lot of people, you know, you put out content every day. And like you said, you're wondering if people are, are listening or not. You're wondering if people care or not and all these other things. And you wonder if you're wasting your time. A lot of people come to me and say, look, I'm on Instagram. Or I'm, on, I'm on Facebook or I'm doing my show, but I don't know if I'm getting out of it what I should get out of it. And so uh, I coached people through that process over typically a 90 day period where we go from I got this idea about a show or I'm currently doing my show, but I'm not making any money. And I take them from that to a position uh, where they can make money. I saw Terry's uh, plug in the gallows arc. So I appreciate that. It's a uh, it's a free community that we have on Facebook where you can come and get free training resources and build with the community of creators. Terry's in there. A couple other people who are doing shows are in there. And, you know, my goal for that community is just for us to build with other creators. So if I can see, you know, hopefully, Terry, someone watches your show and they get so inspired by it that they say, man, maybe I could do a right. show like Terry's and maybe some of this information that Tony's given me, I can take that and then start to utilize it in whatever way. So uh, the the link for that is bit.ly forward slash gallows arc. And uh, so it's bit.ly forward slash G A W L O S A R C. And people can get into the gallows arc 100% free. It's not a place for me to pitch my services or my products. It's really to help us hit our goal of helping 1 million people tell their stories online because it's that important to me. I know what it's done to, for my life. So I want to help as many people get a taste of that as well. Same thing that you guys are doing here. This is dope. Give me that one more. Give me that link again, Tony. Uh, shout out to my wife. She just put it in the yeah. comments. Oh, Bit.ly. Yeah, awesome. forward slash gallows arc. She's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Always Love good her. to have. Always Watching to have. me from the other room, supporting. <laughs> I'm telling you. I can, hear, I can hear everything you said twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> For sure. When you do the, the gallow, it's a small G, right? Because it's all it's small. G. I, I always yeah. capitalize everything, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. interesting. Uh, AD, you mentioned earlier why, or maybe it was Terry, why I called it gallow and what's a gallow, right? Oh, and <laughs> a lot of people have been asking that question. Um, so the reason why I called it gallow and the reason why the spelling is G-A-W-L-O, because in uh, Western Africa, Back in the day, right, when we were all living in villages, they had a position in kind of the government system or the community called gallows. And the gallows were uh, translated to be the keepers of the stories. They were responsible for making sure that the stories of the community, uh, when it comes to their safety and survival, when it came to their uh, entertainment, right. when it came to uh, their history and their heritage, it was the gallows, uh, their position to keep record of all of those things and then to teach it to the generations to come. Wow. Right. That was the position. And sometimes they different parts of Africa, they called them uh, griots, G-R-I-O-T. That was actually the original name, but it was taken. Uh, <laughs> Byron Allen, who is a, an amazing you know, African-American billionaire. He actually has a network uh, called the Grio. And so I didn't want people to be confused. So I took Gallo. And, you know, it's really important to me because today in modern times, we need people who are the keepers of the stories. Right. Everything that I went through in my life and Terry's gone through in his life and AD you've gone through in your life. 
it wasn't just for us. A part of it was for us, for us to learn and grow and get better. But now we can take that and leverage that information, leverage our experiences against the world to help other people who may be going through things like that or mm -hmm. to help people avoid going through things like that, wow. which was always the gallows position, especially in the African community. And so it was super important for me to have it that name and spelled that way. And people always misspell it, which I think is funny. I you did. Know, yeah. Did you? I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, people have it as G-A-L-O-W -O -W. or G-A-L-L-O or all those things like that. But it's G-A-W-L-O. But it's important. It was important for me. And this it wasn't necessarily like a business move, but it was important to me to have it spelled that way to for people to recognize like the importance of it. And it always prompts uh, me to tell that story, which I think is highlights the importance of the work that we do on a consistent basis. Well, let me first say, let me appreciate you. Uh, say I appreciate you because I did not know. And another thing I realized, just realized that I should read more. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, because I had no idea. I really did. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the teaching. You always teach me something. <laughs> Can I tell I'm, you something though? Can I tell that? you something? I suck at reading. I am not, <laughs> I am not a great reader. I read uh, and every now and then I have books in front of me now, but I'm I'm leaning more into becoming just like who I am and being okay with that, being comfortable in my skin. That's me. Yeah, I always That's say me. I'm working every day to be a little more me. And what works for me exponentially greater than reading is watching a video. I'm a video person. I can't I can't text or type very well. Like people yeah. laugh because, you know, like I may misspell something in a caption on Instagram or you'll see something on a video and it may be misspelled or letters transposed or anything like that. Like it's so much easier for me to make the video than it is for me to write the caption under the video. And so, you know, not being a reader per se is not a bad thing as long as you still get the information. And so right. you can you can YouTube Gallo or a short read would be like the Wikipedia page, but you can YouTube Gallo. Right. and find out the history of gallows and hear uh you know some amazing people talk about it from byron allen from uh different celebrities uh, dave Chappelle has a, a youtube video about his mom explaining to him what a griot and what a gallo is as a kid so there's information out there even in video form that you can consume so don't feel like you have to be yeah. a reader that's not a, you know <laughs> I'm glad, they, <laughs> I'm glad they had that one. But so, what, so as we get ready to close, what, what's the best way? What are the ways, different ways people can get a hold of you and follow the... I know we put up the Gallows Facebook on, on a, in the chat a little while ago. Yep. But what other ways is there a website, phone number, email? They can, do you, you do appearances? Make sure you tip your waitress and all that. You do that? <laughs> Absolutely. The best way to get in contact with me is at Tony R. Sanders everywhere. That's it. Every platform you want to see me on, if I'm there, it's at Tony R. Sanders. Nice. Can't beat that with a stick. Hey, did you get any closing remarks, sir? Oh, man, I appreciate you coming on and hanging with us and, and giving us your time and your wisdom and information. Oh, um, I love that. The Gallo. I'm definitely going to join and be a part of that. I don't know yeah. how. How in the world I missed that? But <laughs> um, I definitely appreciate all that you're doing. Um, you are an inspiration for us. Um, just, just in all that you do, and we appreciate you, man. We do, we do appreciate you, and all you know. And I'm watching that six seconds. I'm like, man, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, just, just dope, dude. formats and things like that that yeah. that you're doing. Um, you are leading the way. Um, and like you said, unfortunately, a lot of the platforms change. It seems like over time, and then not the organic reach becomes more difficult. Like Facebook is now taking away the reach, so you can gotta pay for the reach, yeah, for the reach. Mm -hmm. automatically. Oh, so mm -hmm. oh, so what I appreciate you sharing your your wisdom with us and hanging out with us. So thank you for everything. Appreciate, it. appreciate. It. Thanks for having thank me, guys. You. Real quick, all those you got, everybody listening, YouTube that's listening on the the uh, podcast, make sure you follow this gentleman, Tony R. Sandy. Made it simple at Tony R. Sandy. You got time yeah. right now while you're listening, Tony R. R. O N Y R. And please don't forget the R. All right. <laughs> please don't forget the R because you won't get them. You're right. You won't. It won't <laughs> be me. You're gonna get about ten million Tony Sandy in about right. going. Which one is it? Which one is it? Don't forget the R. <laughs> Absolutely. So, we want to thank you guys for joining us on another episode of the Buzz Talk Podcast. Enjoy it, you guys that listen to it audibly. Thank you 
for supporting. Make sure you just, uh, subscribe and download. Uh, Tony has a great podcast called In My Own Words. Is it In My Own Words or is it In My Words? I actually don't do that podcast anymore. What, Tony? The See, episodes are still there. The episodes are still there. My People bad. can go check it out. Okay. But yeah, I got 60 second stories and stories Man, we tell ourselves tell every what night, 6 p.m. I feel yep. bad now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's still out there. I'm People a, can I'm, go back no, and watch. There's like 60 no, episodes of no, that. I'm, I'm a bad podcast. <laughs> I will be certain before I say anything in the same. So, <laughs> my bad. But anyway, 60 second stories and stories to tell ourselves on Facebook. Make sure you join that. But until uh, next time, you guys have an excellent week. Thank you again, Tony, for coming through. And we'll see you guys next week. All right. Boom. I want to thank you for supporting the Brothers Who Talk. So listen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Two things I need you to do. Make sure you comment. Tell us how much you love us. And like this page. Oh, wait. Another third. Subscribe. Make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribing to our podcast, no matter what uh, platform that you're listening to. So the main thing is, I appreciate you even listening and making it this far. Next, what I need you to do is to hit that link right there, right there, right there. Go to the Brothers Who Talk Now, the Brothers Who Talk Now, and be a part of our growth. Support our Patreon page, get some behind the scenes of all our shenanigans, and learn some things. We'll show you how we do our podcast and the equipment we use and how we hook things up. All right? So thank you so much for supporting. Have an awesome day. And again, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to the Brothers Who Talk. Brothers Who Talk. With Terry and AD. Check us out again next week, where we bring you a steaming helping of common sense, laughs, and advice. We can be found on any podcasting platform, iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. We're also on MileHighRadio.com, Saturdays at 12 Eastern. See you there. So that's a blessing. Hey! <laughs> I told you we were going live. Oh, you did? Bro. No, I didn't. Oh, oh, oh. Dropping stuff. Dropping He's dropping stuff. stuff. Yeah. What's oh. up? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand. I really don't understand. I really don't. All right. So, <laughs> welcome to another episode of the Brothers Who Talk podcast with me and AD. What's going on with you? Happy Thursday. I'm glad you guys have. Decided to spend a little bit of time with us today. Um, so we, it's, it's, it's good that you guys are here. We have a great guest on today. So make sure you guys hold tight. Yes. Uh, and I'll be right back. Give me 30 seconds, three seconds of a lamb's tail and all that jazz. Hold tight.